Hello and good evening. Um, it is me, Nikki Guy of Diva Diva Company, the beauty, health, and wellness company. And um, I just decided to really just kind of pop on and do a slightly random video. So what's going on is uh, I have been posting on my Facebook group, A Diva's Guide to Beauty, Health, and Wellness and um instagram about um just detoxing and being fit and so it is officially the 14th day of the year and actually right before january my birthday's in january and so i always try to like get myself revved up for another birthday year so in my 30s um my early 30s I really, really, really struggled with weight gain after I hit my third child. And by my fourth child, it was just a done deal. I hit my highest weight. And so I used to be a weight loss spectator. If you don't know what that is, let me tell you what that is. I feel like I just made that up, but I probably heard it somewhere. I don't know. But I was a weight loss spectator. So um, you can't be a... a you just can't... You just can't, you just can't be a spectator in weight loss. I cannot make this more clear, but I was a professional at it. And so um, I used to look at all the weight loss shows, all of them. And I used to sit on the sofa and I, I used to eat snacks. And then um, I used to look at all the fashion shows and I had really gotten too large to wear the stuff that I really wanted to wear so I was kind of like crushing on everybody and like, oh my God. And so my process and my journey really started with the vision and images in my head of what I wanted to look like, how healthy I wanted to be, the example that I wanted to set for my children. I wanted to live for my children. At that time, several um, people, women, black women that I knew had gotten cancer and died before they hit the age of 50 or shortly after they turned 50. And it was just kind of like really freaking me out. And um, I, I felt like I wanted to be at my peak and at my best. And so, you know, I was just a spectator. It was a spectator sport for me. And it was something that I did on a regular basis. So the change for me happened when I took the desire out of my heart, put the thought in my mind. Um, I started researching, looking at different things. But it happened for me more so by... Um, envisioning or visualizing what I wanted to look like and what I, the type of foods that I wanted to eat and how healthy I wanted to be. And at that time, um, I was in a really bad marriage. I was the mom, a stay at home mom of four. I was super broke and just not overall happy with my whole situation as a whole because I felt like it was so much more that I could do and it was so much more that I wanted to be. And so it started with a vision board and I put the vision board up in my bedroom. So every morning when I got up, that's what I saw. I saw what I wanted to look like. I saw how I wanted to travel. I saw what I wanted my career to look like in these speaking engagements and the type of food that I wanted to eat, which, you know, I used to go in the grocery store all the time and um, get uh, food magazines and I desired to cook these like really healthy, wholesome dishes. Um, but I wasn't doing that. I was I was cooking soul food and um, because at the time that's what my ex-husband liked to eat and I was getting fat. So um, I popped on today because I just felt really inspired um, to tell you about a program that I'm, I'm um, implementing um, at the beginning of February. If you are interested, DM me or hit me up in the comments below. But um I, I make because I'm going to put this on Facebook as well in my Facebook group. And if you're not a member, come on over and join it. I share tips every day. But um, I felt really inspired to come on and talk to you about my pandemic weight gain. So fast forward, I lost all that weight. I lost that weight. And I think the smallest size that I got down to was like a size six. I was definitely a seven, eight. And this was from like a size 16 
tipping on the scales of an 18. And I have to give it to you in clothing size because I really try not to st step on a scale. Scales will lie to you depending on what kind of exercises you're doing and um, even with foods and stuff that you're eating. So I focus more so on picture journals, measurements, and how my clothes fit. But I knew during the pandemic, I was being very bad. And I couldn't do the same type of training that I did in the gym. And it showed up within a month um, that I wasn't able to get a hold of the weights, the heavy weights that I had been lifting and doing. And so it was a struggle. And I actually worked out through the whole entire pandemic, but my body just kind of did something different. And it was a combination of things. Um, I was back in school. I'm a teacher. So I went to school to get my certification in leadership. Um, so that if I wanted to become a vice principal or move to something else, I could. And uh, then I decided to do a doctoral program. And so school was overwhelming me. The move, the merging of the, my family, um, the move was very chaotic. The commute was chaotic. And the pandemic and returning back to school to teach kids that had been virtually learning as well as to watch my own kids to make sure that they adjusted to living in a new place new school and coming in off of virtual. So needless to say, my stress levels were very high. One thing that I learned about myself um, as I went through my weight loss journey the first time, and it actually came from a trainer. She talked to me and she said, you have stress in the belly. I'll never forget it because I was working out like crazy. I was eating healthy, but I, the weight wasn't moving. And so at the time, I really didn't understand what she was saying. But over time, as I learned my body and I began to research, and I'm going to share a book with you. I'm going to share a couple of things with you tonight. Because if you're struggling with weight, I got to find it. I got to find it. <laughs> if you're struggling with weight, you know, I want to I want to help you. And if it, overall, if you're struggling with your goals, I want to help you. Um, so... What I found out is hormonally, stress does not work well for me. When I am stressed, I don't sleep. I crave sugar. I crave caffeine because I'm not sleeping and I'm trying to stay up. And the beginning of this school year was the worst teacher school year I have ever experienced. And I was exhausted. I, was, I had zero energy levels. And so everything was about the caffeine and the sugar. And it was going just everywhere over my body. And as you can see, like my hyper um, pigmentation had cleared up. Um, my skin went bonkers and everything. So I got COVID. And I feel bad saying this, but I but it's my it's my truth. It was a blessing for me to get it because I had to slow down. I had to stop and sleep and let my body just heal. And so I made it through the first semester of my doctoral program with COVID, writing papers, typing papers, doing presentations, sick as a dog. And, um, but I slept. I slept and I hydrated and I slept and I hydrated some more. And so when I came through that, I realized that life is short, is very important, which I always kind of keep that in my forefrontal lobe anyway, especially after the women that I told you that didn't make it to 50 passed away. Um, so, but I was just like, you know what? I don't feel good. Like I didn't feel healthy, even though I was still working out. I knew I, I knew that caffeine addiction, I couldn't kick it. And, um, I just knew that I needed to like reset myself. So I was like, I need to do a detox. And that's what I did. I started my detox before the new year. Um, I just started kind of going green, getting in my, um, going back to my smoothies, um, keeping the workout going and I needed a booster. So I had to do an herbal tea and an herbal supplement. Not ashamed or embarrassed about that. I needed something to kick it in. And as a result of that, it kind of forced me to go into like fasting 
I'm not a faster. I'm not good at fasting at all. I suck at it. <laughs> I suck at fasting. And my church every year starts fasting this time of year. And I've always been like, I got you on a prayer. But, I, you know, I can't fast from food. So this particular supplement, and I'm going to talk more about that at a later date. Um, but this particular supplement kind of helped me to cur curve my cravings for the sweets. And the caffeine, I just really had to go cold turkey. So I would say the first three days were the worst. And then the next two days were hard. And then by the sixth day, I realized that I was going into a fasting that was taking me into something called ketosis. Now, the first time that I did my weight loss journey, I didn't do any special diets per se or eating. I ate three balanced meals a day. I got in my greens. I got in my fruit. I did everything. And if I had a craving or if I wanted to eat something, I ate it. But this time, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. I have a birthday coming up. I don't know what it was, but I needed a boost. And so I let my body do that naturally. And as my body was doing that, I continued to research. I continued to research about the keto. I continued to research about OMAD fasting. And I allowed for my body to naturally go into a keto fasting diet. Did the research and got the keto flu <laughs> you know was ready to bite somebody's head off because i was so hungry at one point but i think i have finally hit my stride with it and i'm really liking the way that my body is looking and i'll say it's been maybe about 17 days and in that process i decided to detox from other things so detoxing from negative people um i actually did a video on my schedule and I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. Now is the time to buy your really, really pretty expensive planners. Um, so I got this one from Michaels. And it has all these pockets and gray things. But I had to detox my schedule because I was overwhelmed. And I wasn't spending time with my family and stuff. So now if it's not in the schedule, and this is going to be hard for me. Because I'm, I don't know how to say no sometimes. But if it's not in the schedule, I have to detox from it because uh, this doctoral program kicked my tail. This is the book. I don't know if it's showing up, like if it's reversing, but it's called The Hormone Reset Diet. I needed to reset my hormones. And that was a part of why I decided to do the detox. And um, she says you can do it in three weeks, seven hormones, eight pounds. But I knew my issue was cortisol. And she, she has a chapter in here devoted to it. And guess what? In order for me to reset that, I had to eliminate the caffeine. Um, I decided to detox my closet. I was so frustrated because stuff wasn't fitting and I got all, you know, these fabulous clothes. Nothing was fitting. And I was just like, you know what? Let me just organize it and prepare because I know I'm going to be back there where I need to be at. I had to detox my workout regimen. I had to incorporate some things into it that I took out. But because of the pandemic, I don't want that to happen to my body again. So I have to balance it out. I mean, I always did the hit, but I love the weight. I love the weight. And when the gym was not there, that weight turned into fat. That muscle turned into fat. And so I'm going to share pictures later. Not today. Not yet. <laughs> I, I want the pictures to, you know, really like, you know, for you to be like, wow, you know, that's her pandemic weight, and this is where she is. Um, I had to detox my food habits, and I just wanted to share a couple of things with you that I really had to go ham on. I had to increase my water, and I'm one of those type of people. Some people like do distill, do spring, do pur purify. I just water, and then I had to... Fill my water with lemon and limes. These are limes, but I filled it with lemon, limes, mint, cucumber. Um, my students were like, Miss Guy Dixon, what are you doing? What are you doing, Miss Guy? <laughs> and I was like, it's water. And I just, you know, will keep filling up my mason jar. Um, cucumbers were essential. I had to put more peppers into my diet. And then I experimented with some things that I normally don't. 
Um, I was never a pecan person. I went pecans. They are delicious. Um, the sweet tooth didn't go anywhere. Don't deny yourself. Figure out what works. So these were some things. This one was a no for me. I researched this and um, a YouTuber said, oh, this is great. This didn't work for me. Maybe it works for somebody else. It did. It was a no for me. Um, this one I haven't actually tried yet. This was my absolute favorite. And so, you know, I increased my vegetable intake. Um, I have a couple of pictures of recipes and stuff that um, I just like kind of created on my own. I ventured into cauliflower. <laughs> in ways that you would not believe. Um, and I also did the zucchini fries. I mean, that wasn't something that was necessarily abnormal for me. Now, one thing that I really did step out on a limb, I had seen this in the grocery store multiple times. And one of my girlfriends asked me, she said, well, how much sodium is in that? Uh, I don't care because I just honestly was surprised that, I mean, you don't want to overindulge in anything. But I was really just surprised at how much this did not taste like cauliflower. And they have a broccoli one. I popped these in the air fryer and they were scrumptious. I couldn't believe it. And I'm tired because, you know, I had a, a good, a really, really good pump tonight. So I don't feel like getting up. But I even found a, like a keto type of ice cream. And it was amazing. So, um... You have to figure out what works for you. Your body is changing. Your hormones are changing. Things change. You have a baby, it changes. <laughs> you get older, it changes. You go on a medication, it changes. So things change and you need to anticipate that things are going to change and think in terms of how you can um, maneuver your way into a healthier version of you. So, like I said, it is, it's about 17 days into to my detox process, and I have detoxed so much more than what I've thought. I have tapped back into my prayer and meditation in a positive way, which I need that because my job is super stressful. And I wanted to share one other thing before I log off. Somebody should have told me because I did not know. So... I had a strategy because my stu my district is actually back on virtual. They'll be all virtual. So who cares what I wear to work virtually? Because they have us in teacher jail. Like we're locked in our classrooms. We can't talk to each other. It's crazy. They want us to come to work and just sit in our classrooms, and empty classrooms and teach kids virtually. But that's what they have us doing because of the, you know what, right? And so um, <laughs> the leggings that I put on... When I got to work, I realized they had a huge, I mean, it was an astronomical hole. Thank God I had something on to, like, cover me. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to go and grab something. Because what I had been doing this whole time that the, the kids had been on virtual, I utilized that to try to reset my workout routines and regimens to, like, really hit it hard. And so I would wear my workout clothes. And if I got a chance during the day, I would go to the gym and get it in real quick or as soon as I got off from work and I was even really trying to push it but my, my work day starts super early so I was like man I gotta go get some um, pants but look at this I found a ton of leggings at Marshall's $8 on sale and the funny thing about it is the clearance with all the same exact leggings workout leggings and workout attire was right behind the stuff that wasn't on sale. And it was the same exact stuff. So like this pair right here, I had this exact pair in my hand. It was full price. And I just so happened to say, let me walk over here and see what they got on the clearance rack. And I found the same exact pair for $8. I don't even know what the difference is. So I'm not gonna lie, it was time for me to get some new ones. I'm a black girl, so I, I, I mean, when I say black, I mean like I am black, but I prefer black leggings. So I got a ton of black leggings. And just about all of them were like $8. And then I tried to venture off. I don't do that good with patterns because I sweat really heavy. But I said I would try this. And if you're going to be doing your home workouts, so I had wore my yoga mat out. If you're going to be doing your home workouts, I found this one. It was on sale. All the stuff was on sale. I found this one for, look at that, $10 on clearance. 
plan, $10. So if you're in a situation and you're looking for motivation to get yourself together, to just get that um, workout going, just jump out there, you know. And it's funny because I had two incidents. Like, don't be the weight loss spectator. Don't be me. Don't do that. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I had two spectators today. I had one that tried to check me, like, on what I was wearing to to work, to be locked into my class from, like, I don't normally dress like that to, you know, but I had a strategy. I had a plan. See, that's how Satan comes. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. She was trying to destroy my plan, my mindset of if I had my workout clothes on, I'm going to work out. <laughs> no excuses. Um, But... The other situation and incident that I had that occurred that was super crazy was this lady in the store. Like, people watch you. People are always watching you. So, she seen me picking out my stuff. I was actually on the phone with one of my coworkers. And so, she kind of stopped me and ran up on me and was just like, I see you're going to the gym. You're going to start going to the gym. And I felt compelled to... I don't know. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a little mean. I felt compelled to chin check her and just let her know I go to the gym every day. Never miss a day. And so she looked at me and she said, well, I'm going to start Monday. And so your Monday needs to be your today today, like right now, like maybe not right now if it's late at night, but maybe in the morning when you wake up, it's no time to start it, but to start it. So don't be the weight loss spectator like me. So, uh, if you're interested in participating in the program that we're having, um, it's going to be a group session. I'm going to take you through the whole process of deciding um, what your goals are. I'm going to keep you accountable. And hopefully, you will get to where you need to get to because you'll have a plan. You'll have a, me a method to execute it. And I'm super excited to uh, help women in particular, get to their health and wellness goals because it's just something that we need to do. We can't afford to get so consumed by work, family, and everything that we check out of here. So um, just let me know if it's something that you, you're interested in. I'm here to be your accountability coach through it. I did not have anybody cheering me on. I just really had to mentally set the tone in my mind that this is what I wanted to do. And if you still want to get like tips or videos, I have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe. I am not the best at YouTubing, but I'm, I anticipate that this will be my year that I will get better at it. And um, so subscribe, like, or share the videos, and then definitely invite more people to the group because this is where you get your free information from. And um, hopefully I'm keeping you accountable. Don't be a spectator. Okay, have a great evening, and I'll be checking in with you guys again soon.